All right, now we're going to start using equations that look like this. So we have to get some intuition for how these types of equations work. Right now I'm just using x to stand for a generic variable. I just want to kind of understand how these work. Let's say that we start by saying that x is equal to x1 plus x2. And then we make a new equation where x is equal to x1 plus x2 plus x3. So we've added in x3. Is adding in x3 going to make x bigger or smaller? Um. Is x going to be bigger in this equation or um, than it was in this equation or smaller? Let's suppose everything is a positive number. Alright, so this is the equation to use when adding the new device makes x bigger. Alright, now here's a more complicated case. where it's not, x does not equal the sum of the sub x's, the reciprocals are based uh, on the sum. Well, let's say that we now, we start here with two devices and we add a third device. And let's figure out whether that's going to make x bigger or smaller when we add the third device. Well, when we add x3, let's again assume everything's positive. When we add x3, is that going to make the right hand side bigger or smaller? Is this right hand side bigger or smaller than the old right hand side? of the equation. Just adding this new positive bigger. term. Yeah. X3 is bigger, so 1 over X3 is bigger, so we're adding something positive to the right-hand side. So the right-hand side has become bigger. Well, if the right-hand side of the equation has become bigger, has the left-hand side of the equation become bigger or smaller? Because it's an equation. In order for the two sides to stay equal, if the right gets bigger, the left has to get bigger. Well, if the left side has gotten bigger, what has happened to x? Has x gotten bigger or smaller to make the left side bigger? Smaller. All right, well, that's a lot of work to show that when you add a new device to this equation, x gets smaller. Whereas when you add a new device to this equation, x gets bigger. It's pretty obvious here that when you add a new device, x gets bigger. It's not nearly as obvious here, but for this reciprocal formula, this is a way of telling us that adding a new device will make x smaller. Well, now we want to think about what happens when we add a new resistor to a circuit. Well, first of all, are we adding this new um, resistor in series or in parallel? Um, in series. Yeah. Well, let's just think about kind of, kind of common sense. It, when we put in this new resistor, is that going to make it easier or harder for current to get all the way around the, the loop? Is it now going to be easier or harder for current to get all the way around the loop now that we have two resistors rather than one? Right. Yeah. We know that each resistor resists the current. Well, in this loop, the current only has to make it through one resistor. But here, after the current gets through this resistor, it has to make it through this resistor too. So it has uh, two jobs to do rather than just one. So would you think that this circuit would have more or less resistance? And the before picture. Um, Should adding this new resistance? Yeah. When we add a resistor in series, we get more resistance. So adding a new resistor in series increases the total resistance. Well, which of our equations should we use to show that? You know, adding a new device should make the, the x bigger. So do we want the sum formula or the reciprocal formula? The sum. Yeah. So that tells us that the equivalent resistance is the sum of the individual resistances. If you want to know what is this equivalent, was resistance equivalent to, well, we just add up the resistances. This just tells us the more resistors we put in series, the greater the total resistance, so to speak. That's kind of common sense. The more resistors you have to push through, the greater the total resistance. This total resistance is called the equivalent resistance. We'll see why in a second. So this is EQ. Well, if there was five resistors, then R would be R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R4 plus, I plus R5. So that's why I put in these dots.
All right, now here's our before picture, and here's our after picture. Uh, now this is a little bit trickier, but what we've done now is opened two different paths that the current can go through. There's now more paths that the current can go through. Well, if there's more paths, should that make it easier or harder for the current to move? Because there's more paths, more places it can go through. So when we, here we've added a resistor in parallel. Well, what have we just decided? When we add a, a resistor in parallel, does that make the resistance bigger or smaller than when there was only one resistor? Smaller. Now there's less resistance. So do we want the sum formula or the reciprocal formula? Because we saw here that in the reciprocal formula, when you add a new device, that ends up decreasing the total x. So here we would have 1 over r equivalent equals 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2 if there was two devices. Or if there was three devices, it would be 1 plus 1 over r3. If there was four devices, you would add 1 over r4. You add as, as many reciprocals as you need. In this particular case, we would just have 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2 equals 1 over r equivalent. Um, the, your, your book has a good analogy for this that makes this easier. Think about this like, say, traffic. Well, adding a new resistor in parallel is like adding a new lane that the traffic can move through. Before, there was only one lane that the traffic could move through, and now there's two alternative lanes that the traffic can move through. So is, this now gonna, is it going to be easier or harder for the traffic to move? Well, it's now going to be easier for the traffic to move because it has more lanes to move through. The traffic won't be as crowded. Here, all the traffic was crowded into just one path, and now the traffic can split up between two different paths. So I think that helps us to see why adding a resistor, this seems a little counterintuitive. We've added a resistor, but that lowered the resistance. Well, it's not really the resistor that lowered the resistance, it's just opening the new path. The fact that we've opened a new path has lowered the total resistance, because there's more paths that the current can go through. Okay, well, I hope we try to give some intuition for why these make sense, but you can also just put these in your cheat sheet and memorize that when resistors are in series, you use this formula. When they're in parallel, use this formula. But remember we saw earlier, oftentimes students think that things are in series and parallel when they're not. Well, you can only use these formulas when the resistors really are in series or parallel, using those technical definitions. So you can't use these until you really have resistors that really are in series or parallel using the definitions we went over earlier. So um, we're going to try to figure out everything that we can about this circuit. Uh, let's go through this together. Um, first of all, can I assume that this is 25 volts? Um, no. No. It's going to be less than 25 volts, so I can't just pull that number over. Okay. So um, there really isn't anything obvious that we can figure out about this picture. There's nothing we can figure out that, about this picture. So we're going to use a trick. We're going, to use, we're going to draw a new circuit that replaces these two resistors with a single equivalent resistor. So we can call this over here uh, R1 and this R2. This is a new trick we haven't used yet today, but now I'm going to draw a new picture. I'm going to call this R12 because it's equivalent to R1 and R2 together. Now, what numbers from the previous picture can I pull over here? Well, this is the same battery, so we can pull this over. So this is very important. When you draw a new equivalent circuit, you can always pull the numbers for the battery over, because it's the same battery as before. Um, now, I'm not, uh, can I assume that this is 7 ohms? Well, no, I can't assume that it's 2 ohms, because it's supposed to be equivalent to these two together. How can I figure out what the, this equivalent resistance would be? What formula should I use? Um, 
Yeah, and there'll be a very simple formula here. So what would be the equivalent resistance? 10 ohms. 2 plus 7? I'm sorry, 9 ohms. There you go, very good. Now where should I put that number 9? I should put it here. Um, not in this picture. Now I'm working in this picture. 